1998, two years after Cortisan released Tomb Raider 1, they released a follow-up, Tomb Raider 1 Gold. This four-level adventure was made exclusively for the PC and was comprised of two mini-adventures. Sit back and watch as I review Tomb Raider 1 Unfinished Business. The first level, Return to Egypt, is a revisit to the city of Kamun Level. This time, Lara is searching for an undiscovered tomb, and you'll notice some differences between the original version right away. The entire room with the huge sphinx has been flooded, and there are crocodiles waiting for Lara to hop in. As you make your way over to the Cat Temple, also previously seen in Tomb Raider 1, you'll notice this entire room has been flooded as well. The Cat Temple is still accessible, and this room is full of crocs. It's really cool to see how you can reuse an old level and with small tweaks make it into an entirely new level. Throughout Return to Egypt, you'll collect various keys, encounter several movable blocks, and avoid a billion spike traps. One area has a really dark pit full of crocodiles, so make sure Lara is at full health before jumping in. One room that is particularly fun is a big room with three slopes and a ton of rolling boulders, spikes, and panthers. I always enjoy a good boulder run, and having multiple boulders is even better. There's ample swimming throughout the level, complete with underwater levers, and of course, more crocodiles. I also really like the layout of the area, with the wooden bridges and water. It had a cool layout, and we visited this area a few times. At the end of the level, we finally emerge outside, and the scenery is really cool. It's nighttime, and it's a cool contrast against the sand and trees. There are a few more boulder traps, and we also come across mummies. Just like in Tomb Raider 1, they're extremely fast and really hard to take down. Once you kill the last mummy, the level ends. Overall, this was a fun level, but I found it a bit linear in comparison to the city of Kamun level in Tomb Raider 1. The second level, Temple of the Cat, is a pretty cool level. The scenery inside the temple is awesome. A lot of soft colors are used and Egyptian pictures on the walls. Outside, the scenery is even better. It's still nighttime and there are tons of stars. Right in front of us is a massive pyramid and as you look around, you'll spot a dozen or so boulders and another small temple. As you get moving, a few mummies and panthers will attack. This time, it's easier to take care of the mummies as you've got more room to move around than in the previous level. This level has some really great exploration with a ton of pickups, various keys to collect, and lots of underwater swims with lots of crocodiles. The graphics are also nice inside the temple. The walls are decorated with Egyptian pictures and hieroglyphics, and the soft blue, beige, and gold color scheme fits this level perfectly. This level has ample traps that include spike traps, extremely tall rooms with long drops, and is far from being short on baddies. This level is non-linear and there is so much to explore. One of the best parts is the room with a massive statue that you need to climb. Once you've reached the top, there is a lever that extends its tongue so you can continue. Little things like this are great and make the level all the more fun. When you've made your way out of the temple, the level and the first adventure ends. In Lara's second mini-adventure, she returns to Atlantis after learning a hive is still in existence with more mutant creatures. With the first level, Atlantean Stronghold begins, you'll notice Lara's inventory has been wiped clean. Apparently, this was an intentional design decision to help increase the difficulty of the game. Compared to the first two levels, the Atlantis levels rule in terms of traps, bodies, and scenery. We begin the level sliding down a ramp and immediately we get a taste of the traps to come. Lava, spewing lava, and rolling boulders start us off. Nice. I love the scenery in this level. Just as in the Atlantis levels in Tomb Raider 1, we've got those awesome rooms with a red and beige color scheme. It almost looks like the walls are alive, and of course, the creepy Atlantean creatures make it all perfect. This level is massive, and there are tons of rooms to explore. The main room features an odd-looking structure with several gaps at the top. You'll be coming back to this room a couple of times, and there are tons of creatures waiting for you. On another note, I found the music was a bit odd in a few places. 
the developers reused a track from Tomb Raider 2's offshore rig and it didn't quite fit the atmosphere of being in Atlantis. I loved how the level was designed and how every area always led back to the main room. It was interesting level design and I loved that we were essentially working our way up only to go back down. A perfectly aligned jump is needed to get into the one hole that's safe in the structure. The end of the level is action packed with tons of creatures and nests that burst as you walk by with more creatures inside. Overall, a really fun level and definitely a great add-on to the Atlantis levels. The final level, the Hive, is my favorite level in the game. The most memorable and fun trap was the big room with boulders hanging from the ceiling. As you step on the tiles below, certain boulders will fall and roll down specific paths. In order to cross the room to get to the lever, you've got to disable most of the boulders. How many times did you get run over? This is an excellent trap and one we have never seen before. This level is loaded with traps and just beyond the boulder trap are more. Razor sharp crashing doors, flying darts, more rolling boulders, and tons and tons of lava. The Atlantis levels are by far the best for traps and they always fit the scenery and atmosphere perfectly. One fun part in the level was getting across a huge pool of lava simply by jumping off sloped ledges and making your way to a safe spot. We've got every type of creature in this level that attack with their hands, fireballs, and darts. There are a ton of hidden secrets and pickups, and you'll enjoy making your way down into more lava pits to find every item. At one point, you slide down a long slope and land in a big pool of water. There are creatures everywhere, and it's lots of fun to take them down. In the middle of the room is a gigantic structure that looks pretty cool. There are a few areas beyond this room to explore, and ultimately, this structure is your final goal. There are several underwater swims, timed doors, and abundance of bodies. One room that is particularly creepy houses eight mutants that get activated on certain trigger tiles. Another great room is at the end of the level that houses eight nests. You'll enjoy killing all of the creatures and making a timed run to finish the level. Overall, a great mini-adventure that is an excellent add-on to the Tomb Raider 1 Atlantis levels. Alright, that's my review of Tomb Raider 1 Unfinished Business. I really loved this game and I thought it was a cool idea that they reused some of the old levels in Tomb Raider 1 to make two new mini-adventures for Lara. Which ones did you prefer, the Egypt or Atlantis levels? As always, please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter, and I hope you enjoyed my review.